All right, I am back again with another breakdown, and this time it is quite, quite an accomplishment here. This is probably one of my biggest punch-ups ever. It is a 240k punch-up with X-Force into a Doc Ock S6. Uh, you can see here the power levels are pretty significant. It's a nice seven red star Doc Ock. Um, be a shame if something happened to him, of course. <laughs> but. Uh, we'll go through the fight here first, and then I'll talk about ISO's recommendations for this team and uh, what works for me. So first things first, um, we are going into a boosted team, which means that they all get three to flex. Um, the other thing is you have to think about when you go in uh, with Negasonic, uh, she's not gonna be able to crit on her alt, right? So uh, as far as ISO eights go, I've just relegated myself to using Striker on her to get that bonus base damage. And you'll see here, it, it pays off pretty well here. So we're getting 176K on a hit there, 191K on Swarm, 113 on uh, Rhino. Big, big damage. And even though those were a lot of six digit hits, um, it does not get any of them into the yellow. So we don't get the uh, second, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, passive to trigger on X23 and get her going. So uh, we got to go ahead with Domino here. I just opt to hit Auk again because why not? Um, unfortunately, our armory just got killed during this fight, so it actually freezes here. That's a bug that's been in the game for quite some time, and it's very annoying, but it is still there uh, for whatever reason. So there it goes, now it resumes. We're gonna go ahead and disrupt Doc just for the heck of it. And then uh, we finally get the X-23 attack and she gets to go and because of that uh, deflect is still there, you wanna make sure that he blocks, uh, you get that secondary uh, attack on her special. Now she's al he's, also, um, he's also got the vulnerability from Domino. So I put Skirmisher on Domino in order to paint the target that I want somebody else to hit. And so she's gonna follow up with a striker ISO 8 attack for about 70,000 damage there. That is enormous. Um, and then we're just gonna finish him off with uh, Deadpool. So we got an offense stuff Deadpool ult right into Ox face and that just uh, annihilates him. And then you can see here that gets Green Goblin and Electro down to half health. So my X-23 gets to go and use her ult, finishes off Electro. Uh, and, and now we're just gonna have to peel them off um, Unfortunately, we lost Negasonic there very early, but that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish off uh, Goblin here if we can, and just get him off the board, and don't, hopefully we won't lose any more of our uh, buffs <laughs> from his passive. And yeah, so um, Swarm does heal uh, on his passive with his uh, charges. So you can see there he gained a bit of health. And now we got a uh, Deadpool plus X-23 versus Rhino uh, to finish off here. Got the second attack to proc on Deadpool's basic there, which is really nice. And then uh, we just got to fight Swarm here, who uh, is missing some of his attacks because she is uh, X-23 is dodging a lot, which is awesome. So we go here, X-23 alt to the face, alt to the body, and finish off that swarm of bees, and that's it. That's all she wrote. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a while because I just I knew that this team had a lot of potential to punch up. I didn't think it would be this high, uh, but since we were fighting Legion of Cabal, I figured, well, why not give it a shot? I mean, what do we have to lose? It's not like we're going to win this war. <laughs> So you can see it there, uh, 443k power into, uh, I think it's 686, which is just nuts. Um, so a huge amount, uh, huge amount of punch up there, uh, 285 or so, uh, thousand power. So let's switch over here, let's go to blue stacks and let's talk about my team real quick. So you can see here, I do have some really good red stars on this team, which is just fantastic because they are generally just raw damage, right? This team is all about damage output. And so red stars help them greatly. And uh, let's just go through them um, real quick here. You can see I have a very basic layout of three strikers who are the big damage dealers and also the big red stars uh, and two skirmishers. Uh, I know that this is not what the community believes. Uh, a lot of the community people put uh, Raider or Fortifier on Domino. They will put Striker on Cable. They will put Raider on Negasonic. And I just kind of want to address that a little bit, as well as the tier fours that I put into this team. So first thing, let's talk about ISOs. Um, you can see there that I did a ton of damage with that ISO 8 attack on X-23's basic, so she has to be a Striker. Um, to me, the other, the other thing is you get, you know, another 5-10% raw damage 
on the striker uh, passive, right? So if you look here, level three gives you 10% more damage. This team is all about damage. So getting that is just massive. And the crit on Raider is nice, especially for somebody like X-23 who hits everybody right off the bat. And you're trying to get a bunch of people into yellow so that you trigger that X-23 passive. But the problem is you cannot crit into uh, deflects or blocks. So if a team is boosted, it means Raider is almost useless until all those deflects are gone. It's it's just a problem with the way that the game works and the mechanics. So even though, yeah, you're getting 20% more crit and 5% more crit damage, it's not useful until you get rid of the deflect. So if it's a boosted target, you don't really want it to be a Raider class on any of your guys to start because they aren't going to really use it. And by the time you get through all those deflects, you know, the battle's kind of tilted one way or the other by then. It's not uh, Crit's probably not going to change it at that point. So... The other issue I had was um, Deadpool. His uh, his uh, damage base was actually lower than X-23's when I had him as a raider and X-23 as a striker. Now, it's usually not a problem for a lot of fights, but if you're going to fight a Coulson or a Taskmaster, you need to make sure that Deadpool is your highest base damage character. And the reason why is because both those characters target the enemy highest base damage character. So. I had to switch him to Striker in order to get him above X-23's damage, right? So you may not have to do that. If your red stars were reversed, if I had six red on Deadpool and five on X-23, I wouldn't have to do that. I would actually make Deadpool a Raider at that point because by the time he goes and he's trying to whip through people with his hack and slash, um, there's really not a whole lot to worry about at that point and he'll be able to make use of it, right? And also be able to apply some more vulnerabilities for Negasonic and X-23 to take advantage of. Um, however, uh, since I don't have it that way, I have to put Striker on him to get his base damage higher than her. Uh, just because I don't have to remember to swap these things around when I'm going after a Mercs team or something. And to me, it's just it's just a smarter play. Yeah, I'm a vi maybe avoiding a little bit more you know crit damage and whatnot that I could have. Uh, but at the long time, in the long run, I'm avoiding uh, having to go back and screw with my ISOs every time I want to make an attack. And to me, that's much, much more valuable. So same thing with Negasonic, right? She probably would be better as a raider, um, especially with the crit damage bonus that the X-Force gets from the Domino passive, right? So we get ex uh, extra 20% crit damage. And um, that's really nice to take advantage of when you can get those crits. But if Negasonic's going first and she's attacking everybody into a, uh, a bunch of deflects, then it's kind of useless. So to me, it just makes more sense to make them all strikers, get that base damage, and let them just wreak havoc on the enemy. And uh, let's let Domino and Cable um, do their attacks, which will you know paint people with vulnerabilities, and then let the other damage dealers take advantage of that. So that's, that's how I play these. Um, as far as tier fours go, um, I have the special and the passive for X-23, which isn't a whole lot. Um, just the two of them. I, I think the uh, the special is much more important than the alt because it's it occurs very early in the fight and it can make or break a fight. So uh, getting an extra 60% damage on both the main attack and the secondary follow-up attack is huge. Uh, huge so I think that's a that's a no-brainer to have uh, the next one Deadpool has no tier fours um, if I was gonna get one I wouldn't do his passive I think that's pretty useless uh, I would probably do his ult just because he hits so many people with it um, that probably wouldn't be a bad one to get but I don't really need it you know I haven't had any trouble with this team killing things so <laughs> I'm not gonna waste the tier fours on him uh, the Negasonic ult is really helpful for making sure that you get somebody into the yellow at the beginning um, just trying to trigger that X-23 passive. So it's definitely very helpful. And then her uh, passive is absolutely ne necessary because um, you get that speed bar. Um, let's see, you know, it's it's gonna be, yeah, a bunch of extra damage for all your X-Force allies, which is just huge. Um, Cause they're all about damage. Like I said, uh, it's just all, uh, it's all about getting uh, some enemies into the yellow and then just keeping that X-23 train rolling. Um, Domino's uh, passive is really nice for the extra crit damage as well as the evade. Uh, anybody who's used X-Force a lot knows that Domino is kind of the weak link. <laughs> she dies very easily, so getting her a bit more evade will help, uh, although it is just such a crapshoot as to whether or not she survives. And then uh, Cable, I don't have any tier fours on him. Um, I know some people like to do his uh, passive and I just, I don't really see the point of it. Um, I don't think it's really that necessary. 
Um, you know, man. I mean, his. I've never really had an issue with his special. I mean, it removes three positive effects from the main target, two from the secondary. I don't really think you need to upgrade the clear more. Um, to me, it's just not necessary. And then by the time we get to his ult on his second turn, the fight's already won or lost at that point. So I'm not really sure that it's necessary. Um, I just, I don't really see the need for it. So to me, uh, this is a very light T4 team in order to be very effective. Um, if you had to choose some T4s that you really need, uh, it would definitely be the passives on the on um, X23, Negasonic, and Domino. Uh, if you just did those, this team is very effective along with the Negasonic alt. You wouldn't have to invest any more in them. The rest are just nice to haves and luxuries, and they'll make your, your win rate go up. But uh, honestly, if you know how to use them, it's, it's really not too bad. Uh, I did tier 14 all three of these guys and left these ones at 12. And I stand behind that decision because these two generally don't do a whole lot. Domino will paint the target and throw Disrupt out there, but if she dies after that, it's not that big of a deal. Um, she just needs to be there at the very beginning when uh, Deadpool gets attacked by, say, a Task or a Coulson. And uh, if he dies, then, you know, as long as she's alive, uh, Deadpool will revive right there. So that's, that's her main purpose, right? And then Cable. Cable is really nice with the turn meter rewind and the buff clear on his special. Uh, he does start charged in war. But to me, I haven't had any issues with him using that and like getting resisted a whole lot or anything. So I don't think you really need to do a whole lot of investment into him. Uh, I may bring him up to 75 here someday, but right now I'm just focused on bringing main characters to 76 and preparing for DD4. And so I'm kind of holding off on it right now. But yeah, so that's that's the team that's the fight uh i think it's i think it's pretty amazing like to be able to punch up so much on this team and uh just get it like from start to finish here just real fast uh just take them out as fast as you can just get rid of awk and this this fight goes so well um if you if you try to take out like electro or swarm first or something like that um Doc's passive is going to proc, and they're going to get a bunch of turn meter, and they're going to heal back up, and his uh, his allies, like adjacent allies, are going to get the turn meter too, and all that, the speed up, and all that. It's just it, you got to focus Doc, and then the whole team falls apart, right? Any, anybody who's played this for a while knows that Sinister Six without Doc Ock is not very powerful, and so as long as you just focus him down, you know it it goes real easy. So uh yeah that's it this is this is the fight and it's just i'm i'm just amazed at how easy this was <laughs> so huge huge punch up a lot of a lot of fun taking this team out and fighting the cabal teams on defense they have some insane insane teams to fight and uh so i got a lot of good uh good attempts at this team as well as the other teams and so i'll be posting some of those later so Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about it. But I think I, I covered everything you could possibly want to know about X-Force right now. Uh, if you have any specific fights that you want to see, uh, let me know. And uh, I'll try to see if I can find them in our next coming wars and uh, test out some new things. Uh, but for right now, it's just uh, the trail to DD4. <laughs> I think that's what everybody's doing. It's trying to get to level 80 and G15 on a bunch of characters so we can start the, the intense grind. Alrighty, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.